Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show or the weekend show if everybody is uh, doing well. It is Friday, Friday after the close. Uh, it's about quarter to five. Usually, again, I don't uh, do these uh, updates on Friday. I usually wait till like you know, Sunday morning or something. Sometimes I'll I have some time on Saturdays, have a crazy uh, busy basketball weekend with my kids. So I figure, hey, it's still fresh in my mind. Market just closed. Uh, let's talk about it, right? Uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for finding us to spend a couple of moments with us. Hopefully, I won't corrupt you too much and have an open mind and learning how to kind of trade both sides of the market. So hopefully, that's a good thing. I'm obviously just kidding. It's tongue in cheek. But most important is uh, be an adult, no matter if you're trading for two weeks, two months, or 25 years, the most important part is act like a professional. And that's the most important part. So uh, market was actually down this week. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, market was actually down this week. You have the Dow down 2.7%. Uh, uh, you have the S&P down 1%. And the NASDAQ uh, edged up actually two tenths of a percent. So my market was great. Nah, 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 right? But anyway, uh, it doesn't make a difference, right? Uh, you have earnings seasons kicked off. You have technology earnings seasons kicked off. So far, we are two for two, right? I'm not counting IBM. I'm not counting, you know, Texas Instruments. I'm counting the Magnificent Seven and their friends. Uh, Netflix, uh, so far last week, came out with really, really good earnings, at least uh, great subscriber numbers, uh, acted very well. Uh, the key one was uh, Tesla, right? Key one was Tesla. Uh, Tesla, great job, right? Introduced uh, a new model that's supposedly coming out uh, at some point in 2025. Uh, despite its uh, missing uh, revenues, the market really embraced uh, that headline. And the most important part is we are now, right? We are now a stone throws away uh, from the July highs, which is actually a very, very big deal. We'll get to the to the pivots in a second. But overall, uh, the market's been really, really good. Uh, it's been super tradable, uh, especially in the tech space. I don't know what else is going on in the rest of the world, with the Russell and the Dow and this, in fact, and that. But in the tech space, it's been really, really good. We've been discussing rotation. Even when the speculation money rests, you got uh, you got rotation into coming into other names. You kind of see uh, in a second here what we had today uh, on the pivot side. But most important is when these stocks are still going, people are still chasing. That's a good thing, guys. I, I understand you know chasing is a bad thing from an individual standpoint of view, but it it means that people are not afraid. That means the speculation money is still alive and dandy. So even though the Nasdaq, the Dow fell nearly two point seven percent this week, did anybody really notice? And that's the most important part. Here is kind of what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Usually, it's not really a big deal. November is here right before, you know, right before the traditional holiday uh, season. But we are in election time, right? Uh, so what we haven't seen yet, okay, and we will, as we get closer to the election, right? As we get closer to the election, you're going to start seeing a lot more volatility, right? Uh, as soon as you see a headline, well, Trump is projected to win. Market does this. Uh, Harris is projected to win. The market does that. It's going to do that all the time. So there's a formula, right? Usually, when you get these projections, when you get these uh, out of left field headlines, they usually come in the afternoon, right? I trade from nine thirty in the morning, and I'm pretty much done by about one o'clock, unless I am buying a dip into something that I want to take overnight. Okay. Uh, in the middle of the day, I will not trade the afternoon because, again, you got your Fed governor speaking, uh, you have your tips auctions, you have all these geopolitical headlines, you have war, this, that, and the third. So I try to avoid it like a plague because I've always maintained the fact that if if you believe the market expands in the morning, right, the channels expand in the morning and contract in the afternoon, what, well, why the hell are you trading in the afternoon, right? If people say this all the time. You hear the expression, and I've said this numerous times. 
I gave back my whole day. You're not giving back your whole day in the morning. You're giving back your whole day in the afternoon. So none, now that we know this, and again, a lot of you guys have unfortunately figured this out as you are starting your journey, but it gets more and more intense as you get a macro geopolitical event. Obviously, the election is what, about three, four weeks away? You're going to see a lot of polls. You're going to see a lot of opinions. You're going to see a lot of uh, volatility. But the most important part is to be smart. Trade the intervals that are beneficial to you. Trade the intervals that news is really not going to be uh, a factor in your trade. Because once you start hitting that one, two, three o'clock Eastern time area, that's when the headlines start coming out. And that's when I don't care how good your, your setup think you think is going to be, you're going to get wicked out. It's just like being in a good trade as as uh, the market is going to the Fed. Eventually, something's going to happen that you're going to wick down. So it's kind of like a cheat sheet of what to expect uh, in the next couple of weeks and things that you can actually avoid so you don't have to be a victim of the headline. Uh, one interesting thing, right? One interesting thing that um, I definitely saw today that raised my eyebrows was, and the New York Stock Exchange, okay, I think they announced it a couple hours ago, the, the New York Stock Exchange has announced it will extend trading hours. Right now, uh, trading hours are from 4 a.m. Uh, ECNs are open from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, now, they are going to extend trading hours to 22 hours of the day. So basically starting at 1.30 in the morning, okay, 1.30 in the morning and ending at 11.30 at night. I don't know which one of you guys are going to be behind your computer during that time. I will be sleeping. There is no amount of money, no amount of opportunity, no amount of anything that's going to get me out of bed at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning to put out a trade. Number one, there's going to be absolutely, absolutely zero liquidity, okay? There's going to be zero liquidity. The spread's going to be like this. And only the degenerates of the degenerates and people obviously living in, in, in Europe and Asia are going to be behind the microphone. So understanding this, right? Understand the dynamics of it. Well, why the hell are you waking up at 1.30 in the morning uh, to trade a market with absolutely no liquidity? I personally have enough action. I have en uh, enough things to do between 9.30 and about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the afternoon that I need to wake up at 1.30 in the morning uh, to start trading, okay? Uh, I think it's going to be a disaster. I think a lot of new traders initially are going to get absolutely murdered until they realize, well, don't do it. The liquidity and the spreads are just not worth it. And eventually it's going to turn into a casino, right? There's going to be absolutely no difference between Caesar's Palace online and, you know, trading, you know, trading A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So it's going to be very interesting to see how the market reacts. I understand why they're doing it because it's a global economy. A lot of people are uh, asleep when our market is open, especially people like in Australia and towards the latter part of the evening, people in Europe and Asia and stuff like that. So I get it. Uh, but I think for an average trader, there's absolutely no reason to be awake at 1.30 in the morning to start trading. If you're trading E-minis, if you're trading, excuse me, if you're trading futures, if that's your thing, uh, Forex, God bless to each his own. I'm not judging, but I promise you at 1.30 in the morning, if I wake up and I have to take a piss, I promise you I'm not turning on my platform and seeing where's Tesla, okay? Speaking of Tesla, okay, speaking of Tesla. Stock looks like it's ready to go to all-time highs, doesn't it? Or at least recent highs. I don't want to say all-time highs, but at least recent highs. Okay, so you have you have here July the 11th highs of 271, right? 271, uh, it is on deck. We've been seeing nonstop for the last couple of days, and Tesla's been amazing, an absolutely amazing godsend uh, over the last uh, 36 hours. We had phenomenal dips on this thing. Uh, overnight today, opened up week, you know, they caught shorts bent uh, at the pre-market and a little bit of selling and they rushed it red to the green, uh, took out, you know, took out those uh, September 30 highs. And you can see here, we are so close uh, getting above uh, those 7-Eleven highs. We're seeing nonstop now 300 calls coming in with size, with absolute size uh, for short-term uh, expiration. It's going to be very, very curious to see how aggressive uh, Tesla can get. For everything else, we're kind of in no man's land, right? We're a little bit of a no man's land. If you look at the cues, and I, I know it's going to sound weird because we have such a powerful move at the open. You'll see here uh, from today's pivots, right? So these are these were today's pivots, right? Uh, Nvidia one forty two forty three needs to build. Nvidia put up a, a two dollar plus move. 
Beautiful move, right? Put up a $2 plus move and then the market kind of like soured. Uh, you had uh, Meta, big, big move on Meta. Uh, Bernstein upgraded today's price target from, uh, from 600 to 675. Uh, 575, this is a 60 minute supply it needs to build. Here was Meta. You know, Meta gave a really nice move. You know, $6 move. This is all, you know, this is all pretty much at the open. Give a $6 move uh, off the uh, 575 supply. Beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Microsoft gave a huge move. Uh, 427.80, 60 minute supply uh, needs to build. Here was uh, Microsoft, right? Here was Microsoft. Look at the move from, uh, look at the move here from this 42780. You see that? 42780. Look at this move all the way to 430. Gorgeous moves. Just absolutely rock star moves uh, at the open. And this was nothing happened in Riot. This one was the absolute big one. Again, we came in long, had a runner uh, overnight. Uh, and great move. Great move. Uh, Tesla yesterday had the biggest move since 2013 for experienced traders. Uh, in case there's, there's profit taking. Let's find uh, the 250, 160s balance. It never got there, but it went red to green. Uh, the Natch took out the natural pivot of 260, took out the 930 highs of 264, 80s, and yada, yada, yada. We are pretty much trading near the high of the day in the 269. That 271 level uh, should be tested at some point, uh, at some point uh, next week. So, really good trade. Okay. Uh, question is now what happens with everything else? That's the problem. When you look at uh, everything else, it's a little bit kind of in no man's land. We're not here nor there. Uh, you got Google, very, very tight channel. You have Meta that looked great this morning, kind of got rejected off the 20 day, which we kind of knew it was there. So that needs to reclaim. You have Amazon, you know, a 10 thing to come out of this channel, but you can see the Bollinger Band is kind of, kind of sticking in the way. Apple is all over the place. One day you have uh, great numbers coming out of China as far as uh, iPhone sales. The next day it pukes. So this thing's kind of strapped in the channel. So you're looking at a lot of names, a lot of names that we trade for the exception of Tesla. And they're like, they're really, really trapped. So what do we do, right? Nothing. That's the point. We let the market tell us which way they're going to break, right? That's the most important part. And you could go one down the line, down the line, right? You got AMD still again trapped on the need supply. SMCI has been an absolute conundrum. Uh, they've been seeing call buying out of the wazoo. It doesn't translate into uh, any price action. Everybody's still waiting. They obviously have uh, earnings coming up, I think, either next week or the week after. And speaking of earnings, I think we're going to have a lot of value next week, guys. Again, we don't even need these specific stocks to come out of the range. We just need these stocks to report and come out of the range. And next week, we got a big slew. We should be very, very uh, busy. Uh, Monday, nobody cares about Monday's earnings. You got E. coli uh, Entertainment, aka um, aka McDonald's. Uh, so nobody cares about that. Actually, McDonald's is on Tuesday. So Tuesday, here's the big ones. You got Google. Eventually, Google will come out of the range one way or another. And you can see here, it's been stuck in this tight range for a very long time. So I look forward to Google come out of the range. Uh, AMD has been kind of also in no man's land for quite a while. Well, this thing's going to come out of the range as well. That's why, that's the point. You don't need to focus on these names until they come out of the range, whether it's to the upside, to the downside, we don't know, but that's the whole point of earnings season. It's going to, it's going to dictate to us which way are we going to trade these stocks, either to the upside uh, or to the downside. You have Wednesday, right? Wednesday, you have Starbucks, you got Microsoft, you have Meta, Caterpillar, right? You have Caterpillar. And Thursday, or as they call it, uh, Super Thursday, uh, you have Amazon, Apple, Intel, Roblox, Intel. Um, so we are ready, right? We are ready. We are prepared. Um, you know, this is a great traditional time of the year. Obviously, we are going to see a lot of volatility uh, with this election as we get closer. But the most important part is, folks, it's a festive time of year. This is where you spend time with your family. Traditionally, yes, the market has been um, great at this time of year. You have the third, th uh, you have the Thanksgiving Day rally. Then it spills over to the Santa Claus rally. Then it's hopefully it spills over into the January effect where everything starts going crazy. Does that have to happen this year? No, nothing has to happen. But the point is, regardless what the market does, Spend time with your loved ones. You only have one life, man. You only have one family. You don't get to do it again. Alyssa, we don't think you get to do it again, right? You don't get a mulligan in this world. 
The key is spend as much time as you get older, you really appreciate. I only thought of just yesterday when I was holding my son at 3.13 in the morning on August the 6th when he was born in 2007. The kid's 17. I can't do that anymore. So time is very precious. Use this time of year to build your foundation in your personal life, build your foundation in your professional life. And the most important part is smile. Life is so much sweeter and so much more enjoyable that way. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great weekend. And I will see you all on the field on Monday. Take care.